All right, question 18. We want to see, we're looking at an optically active compound with a formula of C6H10 reacting with hydrogen with nickel uh, to produce compound B, C6H14. And we know that B is optically inactive. So we go from optically active to optically inactive. And we want to use this information to deduce the structure of A and B. All right, what I want to notice there to help out on this, I want to realize that that actually has as many hydrogens as it's expected to. So what I mean by that, remember our max amount of hydrogens based on the number of carbons is twice the number of carbons plus 2, which is 14. So that's maximum bone. But if I go over here, being that the 4 uh, uh, less, that means this one has two elements of unsaturation. Now, that could be a pair of double bonds, or it's a triple bond. Now, the reason I know it's not a ring is because a ring wouldn't have been able to get me to that C6H14. So I know it's one of those two things. All right, so what I'm going to look at to figure out what's going on is what else must be on here for it to be optically inactive. So I know I have to have four separate things, so I'm going to keep it very simple and make this be an H, and one of these just a methyl. Now the reason I'm coming up with that is this is nothing but carbons and hydrogens, and I have six carbons i got to take care of. All right, so what that kind of leads me to believe is here when it's optically inactive for B, I must have got rid of all of my um, double bonds or that triple bond and ended up with two matching ethyls on either side. Because if we check that, that's going to have that formula of C6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the H's will add up to 14. All right, now what I like about that, if this is actually our structure, then the hydrogen and the nickel, either removing a double bond or a triple bond, all I have to do to make this thing optically optically active is take one of those uh, ethyl groups, leave everything the same, but take one of those ethyl groups and add both of my pi bonds to it, which just takes that and makes a triple bond right there. So this must be an alkyne that reacts with that hydrogen to turn into an alkene. Now, um, there might be other ways to get the structure to work, but this one definitely works. Um, Technically speaking, in this case, this is the only one that works if you mess around with it. But I was just having to deduce things based on the number of carbons it gave me and the fact I had to make this B molecule with at least a, a couple sides that were exactly the same so it would be optically inactive.